So, hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm gonna just go dive right in. We've got a new update available for you. And this camera is mounted towards, oh boy, towards my steering wheel. Oh, yoke, sorry, steering wheel. This is no racing sim. So, I'm sorry if it bubbles around a bit. I thought it would be funny. And uh, I'm showing you this view because it has something to do with the last update. I'm gonna, sh gonna give you a nice view. Here we go, beautiful plane, it's a little uh, rubber boat from, I don't know where it's from, but the marketplace, it was only like four or five bucks or ten euros I believe, and it's money well spent. <laughs> We're flying over Switzerland, I believe, Rens, sim update six, looks beautiful, and we're heading towards the lake there to chill out and talk about the latest update 0.9.5 for you guys. So, um, I'm steering this plane mainly with the rudders, or as you're able to tell, with my potentiometer. And that's because the latest update has been about... Um, one thing about the new update is going to be the rudder. We have a rudder curve that we can manipulate by moving the sliders with dead zone, the sensitivity, sensitivity plus. Uh, yeah, here we go. You can flip it. We can change the maximum value and the minimum value. If we change these, though, there's a little, a little bit, little bit, a oh, little bit of a bug. I'm gonna show you because this sensitivity plus is still all the way to the right. We need to move it back to make it fit screen. That's all it. So if we now move this back to 1023, we see that the curve is once again a little bit askew. Oh, four, two, no, 1023. Here we go, and we're back. And golden. If you move this dead zone, it's where you move the potentiometer, but nothing happens in game, so it's a little bit of a wiggle room, literally neutral where you want it to be. At uh, yeah, right now it's just neutral in the middle in this plane. And yeah, I think that's it for the rudder. Rudder, rudder. rudder. We can save this, and it's fine. Oh, there we go. Almost at the lake. Can we improve the weather? Because I want to see the, how this looks. Oh, we can't. We can't. Let's, oh, yes, we can. Wonderful. September, August, July. Yeah, summer. A few clouds. 11 of 40. Temperature. Nice 30 degrees. This life, right? Enjoying the view. Beautiful update. Uh, I like the sim update because I fly over these parts quite often. Because it's like uh, from Amsterdam out, yeah, from Amsterdam to the rest of Europe, you you cross uh, Switzerland a time or two, going to France and then from France to Poland or something. Another thing that we've changed is that, um, well, we can start this, but remember the old version? I still have it open somewhere here. Let me grab it. Behind. Here we go. Um, now, this is going to work as well because we have it set here. Darn it. Okay, but in the old version, if you didn't have a set selected and you hit start, Nothing would happen, and I'm just gonna show you. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna cut because I've got a little bit of footage from it. So mm. here we go. For those of you that enjoyed the view, I'm gonna hit pause and we're gonna watch what happened. Here you can see that I've got the connector. What just happens if I press start on any of these without selecting a set, you'll see that somewhere around here, we get an error message that tells us, please create or select a set before starting. And then you can just go to outputs, create a set um, and roll fine. So that's a little bit of a uh, quality of life upgrade. It doesn't crash the desktop anymore, uh, which was just uh, a poor design in the first place. 
So as we were able to tell, um, that wasn't really user friendly. So that is why we put in the error messages and made sure that you're not even a you're not even able to start the connector if there is nothing to start in the first place. So with all those little um, tiny little upgrades, also see this button up to date version 0 0.9. Well, in the latest version, you only see this button if a new update is available. So in this case, um, well, I haven't updated the version number on my website yet. So that's, that's why this thinks that there is a new update available. But it checks if there is a new update available. If that is the case, show this button. If that isn't the case, we remove this button. So we, you don't see it and you can't be bothered by it. If you then hit settings, you can always see what version you're running from here. Now, the outputs menu. Hey, there it is. We can do test two. Save set. Now, it still needs a little bit of tweaking with the UI. And you might think to yourself, Dave, that sounds very simple. And I thought so too, but for some reason, this little oh, ah, doesn't work really pretty well. So here we open it again, and it's there. Um, now, why did I show you this? And it's very simple. That's because there's only one entry edit. And back in the day, it would sometimes occur that we would add two lights. Now, why was that possible? And I, I this was a bug. It was so hard to find out. Here we go. So, I had to show you my face because this really was a point for stating for me. Um, here, here we go. If we hit outputs and we hit outputs, now oh, here we go. We can just show you here outputs, 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 outputs. See how many outputs we have now? One, two, three, four, five. Apparently, the moment you hit save set, it would find all those windows, look for the name that was entered in the set name, and then add a set for each of those windows. And that is why you would sometimes have. Two added, three added, four added, even up to, uh, well, as many windows as you had open. Finding that bug was such a pain in the bum because I was just looking at my code, trying to find where did this thing go wrong. I can only see that I'm calling create a set once. So why would it open up so many times until I've noticed that those windows, like the amount of lines that got added started to increase. And I was like, what is making this increase? And it's the amount of freaking windows. So. Outputs, here we go. We can't open it twice. If you close this, we can open it again. If you can't, we open it. Same goes for settings. We can open the settings, we can close the settings, open the settings, but we can't open three settings at once. <clears throat> Finally. Oof. Got that off my chest. Thank you. Uh, what else did we change? I'm trying to get down, by the way. I want to land in the lake. So that's what I'm going to do. Now back to the settings. Um, this radar curve is more of a proof of concept. The delay has been reduced. The input lag has been reduced. I'm trying to see if this works. And we can apply the same principle to the yoke. We can apply the same principle to the um, whatever we want, actually. Throttle, if you want to, I guess. But it opens up more possibilities because we can just copy and paste this solution until uh, you can just copy and paste the solution for other applications. So very, I made sure that we can just easily implement this to whatever we need in the future. But first I wanted to test out the rudder um, because if this works, I guess the rest will be fine as well. I think we can even now fine tune it to work with a hull sensor or something like that because it's an analog input as well. And you can just manipulate these values for yourself. So I'm still using my potentiometer as my rudder device while I go down. To give you back the beautiful view. Here we go. While we slowly make a descent um, in the meantime, library. This is library. This is the Bits and Roids Flights 32, which has been brought to life for the ESP32, but it works on almost all Arduinos as well. 
except for the Due. For that one, you still need the Bits and Droids Fight Connector, but it also has the same features as here. Um, right now, we see a full list. Send AB Master on, AB Panel Handy Lock on, and this has also been updated in the uh, documentation as well. So if you're lost on that, go check it out. And they'll represent the value. Oh, still going down. It's wonderful. Now, back in the days, we used to do serial.println connector. Dot, I don't know. Um, send com one whole ink. And we had to do this and we had to close it, etc. A pretty um, long sentence. And you had to do serial.println, yada, yada, yada. Now we could do two things. We could remove these and the part in front. Right, here we go. Oh, don't forget the closing. Here we go. So serial print line, send com one whole ink. And it's basically just somewhere in here, there's a value that represents send com all whole ink. Um, or we could just do connector.send, send com one whole ink. Now, why did I use connector.send? It's basically just exactly the same as serial print line. It's just that you're quite easy. You can easily spot, okay, something gets sent to the game because we call the connector object, we send something and we send this command. It's purely for your own um, uh, e ease of code maintenance down the road that I've implemented this here. So, it makes your code a little bit shorter, better readable, and it's removed the uh, <coughs> 400 functions from the library. <coughs> Sorry, yeah. Um, I absolutely didn't say that I had to remove 400 functions from the library. That would be insane. Here we go. Now, why do I then have the difference between the... Oh, I'm using my foot as well. The Fly32 and the normal connector, and that's because the Arduino DUE uses certain functionalities that were needed in the connector, the default connector, that couldn't be uploaded to the ESP32. So that's why I had to introduce two libraries. Isn't it amazing? Let's get back to this. That's why I had to introduce two libraries to uh, make sure that they worked on both devices. They both work on most Arduinos, just pick the one that's uh, I don't know why. I like to use this one because it has a shorter name. So it's all up to you. Um, but yeah. Serial print line or connector.send. There's also a change in the rudder pot. A0 is the only variable it needs. The min and maximum value can be set in the connector settings right here. Min, max, neutral. If you want to flip it, so if you want to have your left foot or right foot. I don't really know which side is which, but that doesn't matter. Just hit the reverse button. You think there's a checkbox and you're right, but apparently it's a button because if you now load in again and I'm going to show you. Here we go. Open settings again. And we hit reverse again. Oh, I didn't hit save, but okay. Now hit save. Okay. Take this shit together. Um, settings. It's reversed, but the button isn't checked, so I need to tap it twice and now it works. So it's a little bit of oversight on me, but I've already wrapped and packaged everything. So you've got to deal with it for the day. At least it doesn't crash. So that's, you know, something I hope it doesn't crash. If it does, let me know in the comments down below. Send me an email. Hit us up in Discord. We have an, we have an amazing Discord community that if you want some hints on home cockpit building, hardware building, software, um, even just some general aviation stuff, go check it out. The link is in the description down below. Now, where are we going from here, you might ask? Well, in the next update, we will be adding the custom variables for third-party planes like the CRJ or the BMGGCS6. I hope those are the right letters or else I just learned something about the alphabet or something. Um, those planes use different variables to send data from the game. And they use different variables to control all of the extra buttons that certain uh, in-game planes don't have at the moment. So they use something that's called LVARS. Long story short, you need to create some kind of a module that goes into your add-on folder, like you do with a third-party plane that you download from flightsim.to or 
um, from any other third party site, download it, put it in the community folder. We need to add a bits and droids file as well. So it creates a little bit of an interface between the game and our Excello connector, even more of an interface, and it sends those variables as well. A little bit of a work, so um, I hope I get it done quite rapidly, but once that's done, I'll release the next update, so you guys can be adding um, your own variables. I'm gonna start with a certain set, I believe for the CAJ, because it's a plane that uh, makes heavily use of all the LVARs and has lots of things to control and receive. So I'm gonna start with that one, if that works, and you guys are like, yeah, this works for me as well. I'm gonna add some possibilities for you to add your own variables so you can use every plane at its prompt. Even if I would run out and I got hit by a bus, you would still be able to add variables down the road. So it isn't reliant on me adding them all the time. If you're like, I want a plane that uses this variable, um, but Dave doesn't have it, so ha having to wait until he adds it is going to take quite some time, don't worry, you can do so yourself. But it takes some work. So it's coming, um, that's the next thing. In the meantime, I've been working on uh, landing gear lever and it's turned out pretty great. I think you can already see a little bit of sneak peek in the background. I'm not going to tell you why, where or why. It uses this nice diffusion. Uh, I love this roll of... Um, this has become my new best friend. It's a little sheet of plastic, really easy, easily cuttable with scissors. And it's also used for lampshades and stuff. So it diffuses the light oh so amazingly. But that's coming up. So yeah, I want to thank all my Patreon supporters that make this content possible. Uh, go check out in the comments if you want help out as well. If you want to help out and you know it's free to do so, um, hit the little subscribe button, hit the like button if you like the video. And most of all, have fun and I hope to see you in the next one. I'm gonna have some fun flying around this thing um, and use, trying to use my little finger rudder. So yeah. Thank you very much, stay safe, and have fun flying and building and yeah, whatever, do whatever you want. It's my main message today. Oh, by the way, tomorrow is going to be on the dot the day that we have our 365th day celebration because it's exactly a year since we've done our first video so i want to thank you all for the support this far we've gone over the thousand subscribers we uh, created beautiful projects i'm gonna do a little anniversary video tomorrow uh, so thank you very much and i hope to see you in the next one